Welcome to the Psychology and Physical Training channel, Introduction to Interpersonal Theory and Neurosis. Have you ever wondered how our relationships and interactions shape our mental health? Well, there's a whole branch of psychology dedicated to examining this very question. It's known as the Interpersonal Theory of Psychiatry, a concept pioneered by Harry Stack Sullivan, a luminary in the field of psychiatry. Sullivan believed that our personalities are not isolated entities, but instead, are significantly influenced by our interactions with others. He proposed that our mental health is largely dependent on the nature of our relationships and how we perceive and interpret our interactions. In parallel, another significant concept in the realm of psychiatry is that of neurosis. This term may sound vaguely familiar, and that's probably because it's been a staple in psychological discourse for quite some time. Neurosis was introduced by Karen Horney, a renowned psychoanalyst. According to Horney, neurosis is a maladaptive and counterproductive way to deal with relationships and life's challenges. It's a condition that's marked by anxiety, which arises from the conflict between the real self and the ideal self. Now you might be wondering, what's the significance of these theories? Well, they provide a framework for understanding the complexities of the human mind. They help us comprehend why we behave the way we do, why we react in certain ways to different situations, and why we form the relationships we do. Moreover, these theories are not just academic concepts. They have real-world applications. They are used by mental health professionals worldwide to diagnose and treat a range of psychological conditions, from anxiety and depression to personality disorders. So as we delve into the depths of interpersonal theory and neurosis, we're not just learning about abstract concepts. We're gaining a deeper understanding of the human psyche of ourselves and of those around us. As we delve further, we will explore how these theories provide a deeper understanding of the human psyche. Core Concepts Interpersonal Theory of Psychiatry So, what are the core concepts of the interpersonal theory of psychiatry? Let's delve into this fascinating realm where the human psyche is understood through the lens of relationships and interactions. At the heart of this theory, we find the belief that individuals do not exist in isolation. We are not islands, but rather interconnected beings, with relationships shaping not only our experiences but also our personalities. Harry Stack Sullivan, the founder of this theory, posited that our interactions with others from infancy to adulthood mold us into who we are. One of the unique aspects of Sullivan's theory is the notion of personifications. These are mental images we form of ourselves and others, based on our interactions. These personifications guide our expectations and behaviors in relationships. They may not always be accurate, but they hold significant sway over our interpersonal dynamics. But how do we process these experiences? Sullivan proposed three modes of experience. Prototaxic, parataxic, and syntaxic. The prototaxic mode is the most primitive. It's our earliest experience as infants where sensations and emotions exist without clear boundaries or sequence. It's like a painting with colors bleeding into each other without distinct forms. The parataxic mode comes next, where we start to see connections, but not always logical ones. It's like connecting dots based on intuition or assumption rather than rationality. This mode often shapes our superstitions or illogical beliefs about others. Finally, the syntaxic mode, the realm of logic and reasoning. Here we form relationships between experiences based on evidence and rationality. It's like solving a puzzle with all the pieces fitting together logically. These modes of experience, along with the concept of personifications, play a crucial role in how we perceive and navigate our interpersonal world. They shape our understanding, expectations, and responses in relationships. These concepts form the foundation of interpersonal theory, emphasizing the profound influence of relationships on personality development. Neurosis and Relationships, Karen Horney. Now let's shift our focus to Karen Horney's perspective on neurosis and relationships. Karen Horney, a prominent psychoanalyst, had a unique take on neurosis. Rather than viewing it as a static condition, she saw it as dynamic and evolving. According to Horney, neurotic behavior is not a symptom of a disease, but a coping strategy born out of interpersonal relationships. She argued that neurosis is a result of certain key relationships in one's life, particularly those from childhood, that left a lasting impact. Horney proposed 10 patterns of neurotic needs, which she believed were responses to these early relationships. These patterns include the need for affection and approval, the need for a partner to take over one's life, 
and the need to restrict one's life within narrow borders, to name a few. These needs, while normal to some extent, become neurotic when they are excessive and rigid, causing distress and hindering personal growth. For instance, let's consider the neurotic need for affection and approval. We all desire affection and approval to some degree. But when this need becomes obsessive and all-consuming, it can lead to neurotic behavior. In relationships, this might manifest as a fear of rejection, constant people-pleasing or an inability to assert one's needs and desires. Horney's theory also emphasizes the role of societal and cultural factors in shaping these neurotic needs. She believed that societal norms and expectations can exacerbate or even cause neurotic behavior. For instance, societal pressure to conform and the fear of being ostracized can intensify the neurotic need for approval and acceptance. In essence, Horney's perspective on neurosis and relationships provides a comprehensive understanding of how our interpersonal relationships particularly those from our early years, can shape our neurotic needs and behaviors. It also highlights the role of societal and cultural factors in this process. Horney's theory underscores the importance of understanding neurosis in the context of interpersonal relationships. The dynamics of personality. What exactly determines the dynamics of one's personality? This question may seem simple, but in reality, it's a complex puzzle that has been the subject of significant theorizing and research. Let's start by exploring Harry Stack Sullivan's Interpersonal Theory of Psychiatry. Sullivan's theory places a tremendous emphasis on the influence of interpersonal relationships in shaping our personality. He viewed personality as a temporal phenomenon that's constantly in flux, molded and remolded by our interactions with others. According to Sullivan, we are social animals at our core, and the dynamics of our personality are largely shaped by the quality of our relationships and the social situations we find ourselves in. In contrast, Karen Horney's theory of neurosis offers a different perspective on the dynamics of personality. Horney believed that the impact of neurotic needs plays a pivotal role in determining our personality. Neurotic needs are irrational desires that people feel compelled to satisfy, even if they are detrimental to their well-being. These needs, Horney argued, stem from a place of anxiety and insecurity and they exert a significant influence on our thoughts, behaviors, and overall personality. So, if we were to look at the dynamics of personality through the lens of Horney's theory, we would see a personality that's largely driven by neurotic needs, constantly striving to alleviate anxiety and insecurity. In contrast, Sullivan's theory would depict a personality that's deeply influenced by interpersonal relationships, constantly adapting and evolving in response to social cues and interactions. In essence, the dynamics of personality can be seen as a dance between our interpersonal relationships and our neurotic needs. Sullivan's theory highlights the role of others in shaping our identities, while Horney's theory underscores the impact of our inner anxieties and needs. Both theories offer valuable insights into the multifaceted nature of personality. They remind us that personality is not a static entity. It's dynamic continually shaped and reshaped by both our external interactions and our internal struggles. Clearly, the dynamics of personality are complex, influenced by both our relationships and our neurotic needs. The development of personality. How do these theories explain the development of our personality? Let's start with Sullivan's stages of development, a vital part of his interpersonal theory of psychiatry. Sullivan believed that personality evolves through a series of stages in response to interpersonal relationships. Beginning with the infancy stage where the mother-child relationship plays a crucial role and moving on to the childhood, juvenile, pre-adolescence, and finally, the late adolescent stage. In each stage, the individual encounters different interpersonal situations that shape their personality. These experiences, according to Sullivan, form the basis of our personality structures and the patterns of our interactions with others. On the other hand, Karen Horney's theory of personality development centers around the concept of the real self and the ideal self. The real self is who we truly are, our true feelings, desires, and capabilities. The ideal self, however, is an image of perfection that we strive to become. This ideal self is often a product of societal expectations and pressures. When a gap exists between the real self and the ideal self, it leads to feelings of anxiety and inferiority according to Horney. This, in turn, can result in neurotic needs, irrational defenses that are used to cope with these feelings. 
these neurotic needs, although they may seem counterproductive, play a significant role in shaping our personality as they influence our behavior and interactions with others. Both Sullivan's and Horney's theories emphasize the importance of relationships in the development of personality. They suggest that our interactions with others, right from our infancy, have a profound impact on who we become. Moreover, they underline the role of societal pressures and neurotic needs in shaping our personality. Understanding these theories not only sheds light on the development of personality, but also helps us comprehend the complexities of human behavior. And if you like this video, do not forget to subscribe and follow the Psychology and Physical Training channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.